Hi you folks, in this video we're going to have a look at a question involving lenses. So we have a certain lens has a power of minus 5 diopters. An object that's 10 centimetres tall is placed 5 centimetres away from this lens. We're being asked to calculate a number of things then in regards to this setup. We want to figure out what the focal length of the lens is, to calculate the distance between the object and the image, the magnification of the image, the height of the image, state the nature of that image and then illustrate any answers on a ray diagram. Even if the question hadn't specifically asked us to illustrate a diagram, you should still do that anyway. It'd be good practice just to help you visualise what information you have and what you have still to work out. So we'll start off by sketching the principal axis and we'll put our lens here in the middle. Now, from the question, we see that the lens has a power of minus 5 diopters. So P is equal to minus 5 diopters. That minus tells us that we have a diverging lens. So the rays are going to spread out as they pass through that lens. We know that we have an object that is placed 5 centimetres from the lens. So this distance between the object and the lens, we call U, that is equal to five centimeters. We also know that the object itself has a height of 10 centimeters. So we'll call that HO, and that has a height of 10 centimeters. So we don't know anything else just yet. We don't know the focal length. We're going to try and work all that out. So part A, calculate the focal length of the lens. So the equation we'll be using here is that the power of the lens is equal to 1 over F. So if we rearrange that, the focal length is equal to 1 over P, which means we have 1 over minus 5. When we do that calculation, we get minus 0 0.20 meters. And that unit is in meters because the power of the lens was given in diopters, which is meters to the minus one. So our answer of 0 0.2 here is 0 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters. So F is at 20 centimeters. Part B, calculate the distance between the object and the image. So for this, we're going to need to make use of the lens equation, which is that 1 over F is equal to 1 over U plus 1 over V. For this equation, I'm going to keep all the numbers in centimetres, which means that any answer I get out will also be in centimetres. 1 over F is 1 over 20 centimetres. But remember, this was a diverging lens, so this number is negative. That's equal to 1 over u, u being the object distance. So that is 5 centimetres, and that object distance is positive. Then we're adding on 1 over v. So if we rearrange that, we have that 1 over v is equal to minus 1 over 20, minus 1 over 5, which if we take 20 as a common denominator, we will have minus 1, minus 4, and that's just 1 over 5 is the same as 4 over 20. Then in total, we have minus 5 over 20. Now we need to take the inverse of that, to get v. So v is equal to minus 20 over 5. 20 over 5 is equal to minus 4 and that's 4 centimeters. So that tells us that our image is formed 4 centimeters from the lens and the minus tells us that it's on the same side of the lens as the object is which is what we would expect for a diverging lens. Now, since the question asks for the distance between the object and the image, 
and distance is a scalar quantity, then we can just quote our answer as four centimeters. There's no need for the minus to be included. So our image will be formed here at four centimeters. Now we will come back and draw this diagram out properly. For now, it's just a sketch to get an idea of where the different things are. So, so far we know that the power of the lens is minus five diopters and we worked out that the focal length is minus 20 centimeters. We have an object distance of five centimeters and an image distance of minus four centimeters. The minus just meaning that it's on the same side of the lens as the object. We have the height of the object is 10 centimeters and the height of the image we still don't know. So looking at part C, we want to calculate the magnification of the image. So the magnification of the image is given by the height of the image divided by the height of the object. Which looking at the information we have at the minute, we can't use that equation. But the magnification is also the same as V over U. And we do have that information. So the image distance is four centimeters. Now we can ignore the minus here when we're looking at magnification. We have four centimeters divided by the object distance, which is five. Four over five will give us an answer of 0.8. So the linear magnification is 0.8. So since this linear magnification is less than one, that means that our image is smaller than the object. If it was bigger than one, it means the image would be bigger than the object. Okay, part D, calculate the height of the image. Well, now we can use the equation that we had initially written out for part C which is that the magnification is equal to the height of the image divided by the height of the object. So the magnification is 0.8. That is equal to hi, which is what we're trying to figure out, divided by the height of the object, which was 10 centimeters. So therefore, the height of the image is going to be 0.8 multiplied by 10, which will give us an answer of 8 centimeters. For part E, we want to state the nature of this image. Now, it may help you to draw the diagram first, but if we take what we know so far, we want to describe the nature of the image in terms of whether it's real or virtual, whether it is upright or inverted, and whether it is enlarged or diminished. So let's start off with whether the image is real or whether it's virtual. We know that we have a diverging lens and therefore we know that the image is being formed on the same side of the lens as the object. If we sketch out our diagram, we will see that the image is formed using virtual rays. So we have a virtual image. That is, that image cannot be formed on a screen. We also know that the magnification is 0.8. And we worked out that the height of the image was eight centimeters compared to the object, which was 10 centimeters. So we also know that it is diminished. And finally then, is the image upright or inverted? Well, since we have a diverging lens, that image will be upright. And that will be true of any image formed from a diverging lens, no matter where the object is placed, it will always have those three properties. But we'll see that now when we sketch out the diagram. So now we'll show all this information onto a ray diagram. First, we'll sketch out the principal axis. And then we'll add in the diverging lens. So we know that the lens has a focal length of 20 centimeters. 
I'll use the scale here on the x-axis along the principal axis of one square representing one centimeter and on the vertical I'll use one square representing two centimeters. So we'll label that as F at 20 centimeters. We know that the object was placed five centimeters from the lens So here we have five centimeters and that the height of that object was 10 centimeters. So we have HO is equal to 10 centimeters. So there's two rays that we're going to draw here. The first one's pretty straightforward. It's going to go from the top of the object straight through the center of the lens. So that's right where the lens meets the principal axis. So what we do is just draw a straight line from the top through that center. And I'll add an arrow onto that as well. Now the second ray comes in two parts. First, it travels parallel from the top of the object to the lens, parallel to that principal axis. So that means we're going to have a line that goes straight across until it meets that lens. Now once it meets the lens, it is then refracted and it bends in such a way that it appears as if it's come from the focal point of the lens, which in this case was 20 centimetres. So it's spreading out as if it's come from 20 centimetres behind the lens. So in practice, what you would do is take your ruler and you're going to line it up with two key points. The first point is just at the end of that line that you've just drawn. So where that parallel line meets the lens. The second point you're going to line it up with is the focal point, which is 20 centimetres behind the lens. And what we're going to do is from F to the lens, we're going to draw that as a dashed line. Now the reason we're drawing this as a dashed line is because it is not a real ray of light. But once we get to that point at the top of the lens where we finished off the previous ray of light, we're now going to draw that as a solid line. So this is the refracted ray of light. So this ray has come in from the top of the object it's moving parallel with the principal axis until it meets the lens and then it's refracted at such a way that it appears as if it's come from the focal point. But this dashed line just shows that that's not a real ray of light. That's where this ray of light appears to have come from. So now we can draw in the image that's formed. And the image is formed where those two rays cross over. So we have one ray that is real and we have one ray that is virtual. The real ray is drawn as a solid line. The virtual ray is drawn as a dashed line. Now, if we draw that down until it meets the principal axis, what you'll see here is that our image is four centimeters from the lens. And that's just using the scale one square there represents one centimeter. So our object was five centimeters from the lens. Our image is four centimeters from the lens, which is what we find by calculation. Also, if we use the scale on the y-axis where one square represents two centimeters, the object height was 10 centimeters. So it was five squares, but our image height is four squares which means that it is eight centimeters. So HI is equal to eight centimeters. And that's just showing everything that we've done by calculation and just putting that into a ray diagram. Notice that all the rays are drawn using straight lines with arrows. And the arrows are really important here to indicate the direction. We can also see from this diagram that our image is upright 
we can see that it's diminished and that it is virtual because this image cannot be formed on a screen. It is made from real and virtual rays. So it is not a real image.